and welcome to WRPB and WRPB Studios. You know, you guys know me for a long time, and there's very few things I like as much as I like theater. And if you watched us and been around us, you know we do like a half a percent of the videos we do are sports, and 70% of the videos we do are theater and entertainment. <laughs> I love theater. The problem that I think theater has is that one, they've outpriced a lot of people from going. Two, we had an issue with Madoff, who really kind of, uh, it made the theaters take a hit. And three is kids are not brought to the theater enough mm. to, to learn what theater is actually about. With me is Oscar from the Riverside Theater. Hey, Good it's to see you It's been like again. forever. It has been. It okay. has been forever. Um, Okay, so in my eyes, you're so blessed to be working in an industry that is, to me, like one of the coolest industries. It is. It is amazing uh, to be able to to see how work is created and put on stage and have that work validated by everyone who comes to see a show and they're laughing and they're applauding and they're giving the actors a standing ovation. But you also mentioned about kids. Well, Riverside Theater does have an education department and we do have classes for kids to learn how to bring out the creativity within them. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily that they have to be performers as they grow right. up, but the fact that Every person is creative in one way or another. And for a child to be able to feel self-confident, to be able to stand up in front of a crowd, trust me, whether you're in theater or not, you will always have to stand up in front of someone yep. to give a report or to give a lesson or whatever. And so th this teaches kids how to be self-sufficient, to be self-confident. So having that theater portion uh, at Riverside Theater is, is very important. And of course, the shows. Okay, the shows, so, the shows, the shows. Right. <laughs> My, m I've, been around, I've been on In Front of People, I've been on the air, I have over 65,000 interviews, yet on my bucket list, I had one thing to get up on an open mic night and do comedy shtick. Mm. And yet I don't have the nerve to do that. And it's so weird because I'll get up and talk in front of everybody about theater and about what I do. Um, most of my viewers know that I was molested as a kid. I talk in front of groups. Do that, not a problem. And most of my conversations, no matter how serious, have some levity in it because life is about. True. Sure. Okay, you have to laugh. Absolutely. Okay. For me, theater brought out the thought that these people are amazing. And when I say amazing, it's not like the movies. Because in the movies, you mess up, we'll just do it again. Don't worry about it. Take two. All right. Those people have to get up on stage. They have Some of them have to sing, dance, act, know where to be, when to be there. Right. That is brutal. And then when you got, and I always get emails after I say this, then when you got critics who have never been in the industry criticizing and panning something, the philosophy is you get up there and do it and then you have a, a right to criticize. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I saw a play about the mamas and papas and the phone rings and they, back then the phones had cords on them, believe it or not. <laughs> and the phone falls off the podium and they got panned for that by a reviewer. Now, I don't know about you, but I was brought up in the time where phones had, and it's fallen off the wall. Mm -hmm. it's off, it, it can't be, it should, I personally think it shouldn't be perfect. I think it should be real world. Uh, there was time that the sound went down. And where they left off when the sound went down, they continued on. And when the sound came back on, they were exactly where they had to be. Mm -hmm. at that. that takes professionalism that I just can't muster myself. And Maybe you should have started classes as a kid. You'd be able to do that then. Okay, it's a little late for, kid. <laughs> a little late for, for me to do that. And <clears throat> I've seen so many plays. Nothing really recently because everybody knows I took care of my mom mm -hmm. and stuff. And then you guys dealt with a pandemic. Okay. So now you're back in the running. We're back in the running. We're, we're, this is our 50th anniversary season. Uh, so to think that in 1972, 73, 
the Riverside Theater was built and started oh. to give shows, present shows. It's, it's quite amazing. I think I've been to many theaters, some better than others. But for me, it becomes a comfort issue. One, because I only have six percent lung function, so if I'm in the middle, I'm mm -hmm. kind of have a hard time breathing. Mm -hmm. Two is my wife is almost five foot ten, so she has, needs this leg room, and I'm probably one of the few guys that let my wife sit on the aisle if I get an aisle seat. Um, but the Riverside Theater is just a very comfortable theater. It's got enough riser space for me who's only 5'2 to see over the front, mm -hmm. person in front of me most of the time. And most people say, oh yeah, I was in the first row. Well, in a play, unless it's a one-man show, mm -hmm. you don't want to be in the first row, okay? Because you, you'll have the spring neck going back and forth, mm -hmm. all right? I think that there are so many better seats not really in the first row. The other thing I liked about Riverside Theater was the vol I guess I'm going to call them the volunteer staff. Sure. They were great, uh, pleasant, nice, and, and those things make the whole experience better. Absolutely. That's, okay. That's what I've al always said. Riverside and so many other theaters don't have merchandise like a cup or a chair or something that you could purchase and keep at home. What we can give theaters and Riverside Theater in particular, we give an experience. Right. And the experience, we're hoping, we're working hard to make sure it's a great experience. And starting from the fact that when you park your car and you cross the street, hopefully you hear some music. And you're greeted at the, at the door with a volunteer who's happy to see you and gives you a warm welcome, maybe gives you a playbill, shows you to your seat so that you don't have to concern yourself with anything but just enjoy. And that's what live theater can give that other entities can't. You know, what's interesting about Riverside Theater is, and I, I, I hope I don't get this wrong, is that when you go to a theater and you're early, because I go early, mm -hmm. you're just sitting there and it is what it is. When you go to Riverside, you're outside in a thing called In The Loop. Yep. Is that what it's called? Yep. Okay, and there's usually music playing. Correct. Something going on. You can get food there. Yep. Okay, it's just a great, great place to be and it gives you the reason to get there early so I can get a good parking spot. Now, that's only Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah, well, I... I During the week, Tuesdays, well, there's, there's not a band playing Right, outside. well, <laughs> are you dark Mondays? Uh, we do. We are dark on Mondays. Uh, performances are Tuesdays through Sundays. And Fridays and Saturdays are the ones uh, where we have the musicians playing outside because we also usually have Comedy Zone in our second stage. Okay. You have matinees on Sunday? We do. We have matinees Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Oh, wow. Three matinees. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Most theaters have just either just Sunday or Saturday and Sunday. So I've seen a ton of plays. Some of my favorites. You can't have one favorite. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> okay? It just doesn't happen. You have to have a couple because you have those couple, if you do theater. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of favorites, and there's a couple that might not be your favorites, but you've seen them more than once. Right. Okay? Um, and it's usually, in my eyes, it's usually, even if they're not my favorites, it's usually the music mm -hmm. that makes me want to see them more than once. Mm -hmm. um, one being Cats. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because Cats really doesn't have a story. Okay? But it's got some great music. Amazing music. Okay? And <clears throat> I saw Cats probably about four or five times. I saw it on Christmas Eve, I think. Oh, that's cool. Well, you would th maybe it was New Year's. It was either Christmas Eve or New Year's. And people would think it's cool, but it really was not the best of the performances, really? I think, because it was a holiday and maybe they just didn't want to be out <laughs> I don't know. Your favorites when it comes to theater? Oh, absolutely. I have, like, like you mentioned, I have many favorites, right. and it all depends on the time of, of life that you're in, or the mood that you're in, or where you saw a specific show. Ah, uh, true. But you know, I remember seeing How to Succeed on, uh, in Business on Broadway with John Stamos, and I loved that. I, I loved 
Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. I Excellent. loved that one. Um, when Riverside did 42nd Street about 11 years ago, and we're doing it again this year. Oh, I absolutely excellent. love that. I love Les Mis. I love Phantom of the Opera. There are so Will Rogers Follies. All these. I'm waiting for you to hit one that's in my top five. <laughs> <laughs> um, my Fair Lady. Okay. Um, well, I mean, those are all excellent. Okay. And everybody likes different. Like absolutely. Les Mis and Phantom. Like everybody loves Phantom. It was okay, I, but not in my top. It was spectacle. Okay. I saw it on Broadway, and oh, okay. it was a spectacle of it. Uh, it. I guess it was the first mega musical that I've seen, where where you know, it cost hundred billion dollars to put, <laughs> and it was all on stage. I'm exaggerating, of course, but but you could see the spectacle of it. It was just so grandiose. And it's funny because, being older, it's really kind of cool because. I talk about plays that you really almost don't see them anymore. The classics? Well, Pippin is one of my favorites. Pippin is great. Okay. Mamma Mia is one of my favorites. Mamma Mia. Loved Mamma Mia when we did it. Okay. There's one that 900,000 people never heard of, which is Equus. Yes. Okay. Ooh, that's a heavy one. Equus is a... It's, it's one beautiful. Of the few it's powerful. Drama style things that don't have music but really pull you in. Absolutely. And then, of course, in the top there is Jesus Christ Superstar for me. But I think if I ha And the children did that uh, really? a few years back. They if did I had a to pick my fabulous best, production of it. Oh, Equus makes your mind think. Yeah. But so does Wicked. <laughs> okay. That's one I've been dying to see. I've never seen oh. it, and I would love to see it. I know the music forwards and backwards, but I've never it's seen it. It's not even really the music. It's you walk out of there going, holy mackerel. No one ever saw it that way. We always saw it that this was a bad one. This right. Is, right. They turned it around and told yeah. you why things went. It was, it was pretty amazing. Um, probably, if I had to pick a top, that would probably be one of them. My wife is so frustrated with Jesus Christ Superstar because I played it eight million <laughs> times and the music, and I'm friends with Ted Neely, mm. okay, who played it in, yes. the, in the play and in the movie, and he's still playing it, okay? Um, and I've seen him in New York, I've seen him here, I've seen him in Arizona, um, that, and that happens to be one of my favorites. You have a season coming. We do. So... Let's talk about what that is. How is it starting? Or how did it start? Um, it starts October, November with Butterflies Are Free. Oh, my God. It's, uh, that was Goldie Hawn. Goldie Hawn and Edward Albert Yes. Uh, what, did the movie in 1972. And it's sort of the reason that Alan Cornell, who's a producing artistic director, CEO of the theater, wanted to do this one was because this movie was sort of playing when the theater opened. So it's like oh, okay. a little retrospective uh -huh. of that. And so that opens the 20. 5th of October, runs through November 13th. Kind of hippie-ish. Hippie-ish. Okay, blind guy. Free. Yep. Spirit, free yep. love. Um, a beautiful little story. I don't want to give all the details. No. Um, but uh, two people who live next to each other and very thin walls, and they sort of connect through the thin walls, and then they connect in real life. Uh, a very a cool story, okay? And it kind of really lets you, I hate to say this way, believe in human nature. Absolutely. Okay, and positive. Okay, yeah, so yeah. that's October, November. October, November. When does then, it start or did it start? Uh, October 25th okay. through November 13th. Then in January, then January through the end of June is chock full of shows, 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 shows. Um, January we have Man of La Mancha. Wow. Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone remembers Impossible Dream, but it's such a beautiful and powerful piece. Uh, then in February, we have a comedy called A Comedy of Tenors, okay. uh, written by Ken Ludwig, who did Lend Me a Tenor. So this is sort of a, a, a newer version or a continuing of the story where you have um, three major famous tenors coming to give a concert in Paris in the 1930s, like uh, like the three tenor Placido Domingo, Pavarotti and Carreras, who did it in the 80s, and they got together and did all these concerts. Well, it's a comedy about these tenors coming together, but all the shenanigans that <laughs> happen behind the scenes. That's fun. Um, and then we have in uh, April, 42nd Street, 
fabulous, wonderful, Great music. incredible shows. The tap, dance, heavy, wonderful. Keep saying wonderful. Wonderful is the word of the day. Um, <laughs> um, such a fun show. And then we end in June. These are on the main stage. In June, we have Honky Tonk Angels, which is a musical review. It, there is a story. Three, three ladies who sort of leave their lives and go to Nashville to become country stars. But throughout the whole show, they do sing a lot of country favorites. Nine to five, these, moods, these boots are made for walk-in. A lot of uh, Honky Tonk Angels is the actual song. <laughs> um, so there are a lot of country songs fem that are sung by females in, in this show that are tremendous. Then on their second stage, the main stage is the one with the Razzle dazzle. It's right. the bigger shows. It's the thirty people on a on a stage. The second stage is a more intimate space. So it's not about the razzle dazzle or the spectacle, but it's about the power of the play and the playwright. And uh, we start at the end of January into February with Bakersfield Mist, which is a story based on a true life story where uh, a lady finds at a yard sale a painting and she buys it. And then she's convinced is a Jackson Pollock worth millions of dollars. And she only paid like five bucks. So the play is really her sort of with this in mind, trying to convince this art dealer who has come down from New York that this is really a real deal. This is a real thing worth millions of dollars. I relate to her. Do you? <laughs> yeah, because I bought a Disney thing at Goodwill for five ninety five, And it's worth $1,700. What? Yep. It's a original so there you Disney. go. So I, I relate to her. You understand it. You, <laughs> yeah. You've lived it. Yeah, I live it. And I still live it. It's still hanging in my room. <laughs> and then the second pay, uh, show on the second stage is Oleana by David Mamet. Mm -hmm. um, a sort of he said, she said sort of play, very dramatic piece, uh, won tons of awards. So the second stage is more about the power and the intimacy because the people are right within feet of the actor. So right. it's it's... It's very, it can be intense. You feel part of the show more so than a big spectacle where you're like you, Wayne, you're further back. You're not in the first row, um, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's great. We're excited about the season. We're thrilled that people want to come back, but we also realize that it has been out of people's habit to come to the right. theater. So we got to get them back in that sort of habit to coming. What? Because you just mentioned those things, but there was so much more going on at the theater. Because I know that I went there and saw, I think, Dueling Pianos. Yeah. Okay. I love Dueling Pianos. Okay. I think it's great. And it, I've seen it in a lot of places. Um, first place was in Orlando. The cool thing about At the Small Stage by you. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it was really so interactive. Very interactive. Like Orlando. Very which made it much more enjoyable. I had a good time with that. Um, I remember the first time I met you, which goes back probably, I don't know, six years maybe? Six years when I was 20? Yeah. <laughs> Big lie on my stage. I know. Because I have to step back and let you come. Um, <laughs> but you, they were preparing to do a show. And I'm old, so I won't remember the name maybe right away. And you took us backstage where they were building mm -hmm. the things. And it was a musical. Yeah. Do you remember? I don't remember that specific one. It was one. all women singing. Okay. And it was like, um, I remember them building these, I hate to say it this way, they looked to me. Like when you went to the circus as a kid? Have yeah, the, the, the yeah, it could have been Beehive. It, it, was beehive. Be it was Beehive. It was Beehive. Yep, it was Beehive. Thank you. <laughs> so and that was the first play I actually saw at, at your place. Now, you also have Music in the Loop. Correct. On the weekends. Local bands play. Okay. And the connection there for me is Gary and the Land Sharks because yeah. I'm a parrot head. Yeah. Okay, so. And they have played on our loop many yep, times. I've been there. Just to see them play. If you haven't seen Gary and Lashick play, you got to go to the um, Riverside Theater website. And just so when you see when they're playing, if you don't go for anything else, you got to go for that. <laughs> but if you haven't been to theater, you really don't understand what you're missing. Like, my wife reads books. And 
I'm into the movies. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't, not, I'm not a big reader. And she says, a book takes you there. Mm-hmm. The movie doesn't really take you there. Okay. A play puts you there. Mm-hmm. And guys are more visual than women. Okay. But to me, I'm in awe of most of those people who get up on stage and do what they do. And they don't have to be um, somebody famous. Mm-hmm. Okay. The truth of the matter is, most of the best things I've seen were with people who weren't famous, which were yeah. traveling things. Sure. Uh, I remember seeing um, uh, a one woman play, and of course I won't think of her name. She was the mom and nanny, uh, married to Joseph Bologna. Okay. Do you know who I'm talking about? I do. I can picture her. I can't and remember her name and myself. I, she was so sweet. We did an interview with her at the hotel prior to her getting on. And she was kind of bitching because they didn't give her a suite. Oh. Okay. So they let us film in a suite. And she said, you know what? She didn't fill the bathtub up, but she stood in the bathtub to do her interview. I, I, just, a, just a sweetheart. Um, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips did... Um, uh, a play, and um, it was a musical, and he's really not a singer. Mm-hmm. But a gentleman, the less, I went backstage, he had his child with him, he had the oh, crib, nice. and backstage. it was really, some of the people are just amazing, and they live a regular life just like we do. What What's beautiful about theater, and, um, it, and I, I'm, I don't mean to disparage uh, movies or anything like that but what's neat about theater is that you create this sort of little family instantly to work towards the goal of making sure that this production is the best possibly can be and each presentation each time they perform is unique you can come one day and come the very next day and it's slightly different not that the sets are different or the people are different but the audience is part of the show Mm -hmm. so if an audience member is really into it and they're applauding and they're you know standing up and whatnot they give the actors some sort of energy that the actors take and give back and so you might come to one performance where the audience is really behind them another one they're a little more quiet the energy is a little different uh, and so it's unique, although it's the same on stage. So what's what's great is that each performance is unique. The actors on stage listen and take the energy from the audience to internalize and then give back. Renee Taylor. Renee That's Taylor, a- <laughs> yes. There you go. A great lady. So uh, let me ask you this then. So let's just say it's a seven-day run. I'm just yes. picking it up. Mm-hmm. Is th- media always goes opening day. Yes. Okay. Which I don't want to say is not the best time to go because all the things are tweaked out mm-hmm. on opening day, okay. But that's when media <laughs> seems to it's go. It's usually okay. Um, I said I seen cats like five, six times. I don't know, and each time was a little different, okay. And they say there's no story to it, but there is a story to it. There is a little story you have to story. kind of figure it out. Um, but sometimes you got to go for more than just a story. Mm-hmm. You gotta go. A lot of times you gotta go for the mu- for the music. Mm-hmm. A lot of times you gotta because some of that music is just utterly amazing. Yeah. Okay. The other things you gotta go for, if you can open your mind to understand, and this is just me, what those people that are up there on the stage go through to get to this point to entertain you, because mm-hmm. they don't just get up there and do this. Right. Okay. A lot of work. Uh, yeah. How much rehearsals do these people get? On um, for for Riverside Theater. Um, we're a. There are two types of theaters. There's a presenting theater, like the Sunrise and the Lyric, um, who have performers come, or the whole show come, and they perform one or two nights, and then they go on to the next. Riverside produces, so we create our own. We go to New York, we hire the actors, we bring them down, we rehearse them for three weeks in Vero Beach, then they perform for three weeks. Okay. We build the sets in Vero, we, we hang the lights, we build the costumes, all those things are produced or created in Vero just for the Vero audiences. And then once the show is over, everyone goes their, their merry way and the sets are torn.
torn down and we keep whatever and the costumes go into storage and whatnot. Um, so the actors in essence are in town in the Treasure Coast Vero area for six weeks, three weeks of rehearsals and three weeks of performances. You know, we talk, I, and I, ha I have to correct this because we're out of time. I talk about the people on stage and how amazing they are, mm -hmm. but you really got to think they couldn't do their job without the people that build some of these Absolutely. amazing stages. Absolutely. The lighting crew, the audio crew, you know, being in, in that industry, they're just utterly, some of these people yeah. are just amazing and they're so, so talented. Most of us can't make a box out of wood if we're given all the pieces with A, B, C <laughs> and put a desk together. I consider myself a success if and when I get to the point where I order a desk and it's together already. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and it's not an Ikea piece. I, was, I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you, Wayne. So my Pleasure. question before I let you go is, what's the website? RiversideTheater.com And the phone number? 772-231-6990 Everybody, check them out. I'm going to have the information on the screen. Um, you got to see some of these plays. They're just utterly amazing. And... On a Friday, a, third, a Friday or Saturday night, if you're really not doing anything, you just want to kick some time out and you're not up to seeing a play, just go in the loop. Yeah. That's great. It's free, it's I guess. It's free. Right? It's free. And you can just, we have tables and chairs out there. People can just sit and enjoy the music. And you can bring your own chairs because... Sure. Lawn you, chairs are available. When you got... Uh, Someone like Gary came. There was no, no play. Gary, <laughs> you can bring your own chair. Yes. He has his own, <laughs> his own following. Because us parrot heads are a little crazy that way. But everybody, check him out, and we'll be right back. <laughs>